Hi Sarah from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Welcome back to my channel for another video. If you've not um, seen me before, hello, it's nice to see you. Do check out um, the whole channel for all our other videos, over 200 now. You can easily get to that just by clicking on my name below um, and check out and see what we've got. Um, if you've been here before, welcome back. It's nice to have you along. Um, and I'm going to show you another of my favourite books off the bookshelf today. Um, this is going to be the last one I do in this little series. So if you've enjoyed this and you'd like to see some more, leave me some comments below um, and we'll get stitching again on the next video so let's have a look at what I've got for you today so we've already um, covered some books on some gold work and we've looked at the bow tapestry which is cruel work we had a little look at needlepoint so the one I want to show you today that I really love is about silk shading and gold work together. Now this is another catalogue, so this is a book here, Threads of Silk and Gold, and it's another catalogue from an exhibition that was held at the Ashmolean in Oxford. Um, and it has become apparent when I'm doing these videos um, that people are interested in these books and a lot of them aren't available. Um, at the moment so it's a good idea if you go to an exhibition to buy the catalogue <laughs> because they do go out of print and then you can't get them and if you can't get to the exhibition they often sell the catalogues on their website as well so this has probably been on the Ashmolean website when the exhibition was on so keep an eye out for exhibitions online and you can always get the catalogue from the shop at the time so just something um, worth noting that one so this is an exhibition I got to see um, and it's ornamental textiles from Meiji, Japan. I'm going to read you the front bit because it's quite a specific um, subject. So it says, this book is a study of Japanese ornamental textiles made for the foreign market during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Um, so they're an important feature of the Western fascination with all things Japanese at that time, winning numerous accolades at international fairs and being used to decorate homes across Europe and the United States. So what's interesting about this, I think, is that it's um, for a very specific market. So Japanese textiles, but made for the Western market. So the subject matter is a little bit different, perhaps, than what they would make for themselves. Um, the period that we're talking about, the Meiji period, written it down here, is 1868 to 1912. So it's quite a specific um, period of time and place for this catalogue, but there were absolutely exquisite pieces of embroidery. So let's jump in and have a look. So I just wanted to show you this front cover because this is actually all embroidered and it looks painted when you first look at it. You think, oh, that's a nice painting. And then you realise the whole entire thing is stitched, um, which is just a bit mind blowing if you've done some stitching. And especially if you've done some silk shading needle painting, you will just be amazed at what they did, did with this subject. Um, so he appears again, again a little bit later. So let's jump into some other pieces so there's lots of information at the beginning about this period and about these textiles and how they were made but I just want to show you some of the images because really really inspiring images so again all stitched all the white stitched on black really stunning colour to stitch on um, something that maybe you've got to be a bit braver to do um, to stitch on a, a black background but look how beautiful these are and so subtle colours as well not loads and loads of colours in there and they would use the silk and the shine off the silk to get it to to make the the shapes that they wanted to shape and they'd pad it and this shine the light would shine off it differently and you can see the individual feathers so although the technique looks simple i can assure you it isn't There's another beautiful one here and this one's really interesting. So not as fine as that last one we've just looked at with, with this stitching here, but look at the background. Pure gold thread in the background. And this would have just shone amazingly in the light. Absolutely beautiful. Mixed in with the, with the silk um, stitching as well. So lots of history on the textiles of this area. Loads of pictures about it. I love this little... Um, Embroidery, uh, embroidery thread cupboard today, it says from Kyoto. Um, love a thread cupboard like that. <laughs> My thread cupboard doesn't look like that. But let's jump into the catalogue part of it. Now, this is interesting at the beginning. So, a glossary of materials and techniques. Now, some of them we recognise, but we probably call them something different um, in English embroidery, certainly. So, it's really interesting to have the Japanese names for these different techniques as well. And a little explanation of how they would have done it. So, if you want to ever have a go at these things, um, 
you've got a little explanation and you can work it out and have a go at a different style of something that you may already know yourself. So I think that's really interesting to have that at the beginning. If you're a stitcher, that will really, um, really be benefit. Now, every piece in here is stunning. So if I say that several times, I apologise now. Um, but look at this close up of these two birds. So this is all worked in silk threads and this is a long and short technique um, but all done in silk threads and very subtle colours so they allowed on the shine of the silk to make the effect more than how many colours you put in there but look at the little spots on the feathers here that they've got in such beautiful detail getting smaller and smaller as it comes around to the eye and they've done some really clever things with this as well so it's just where the stitching stops is what makes the the shape of the feathers so this is all the same color but just by doing this stitching in blocks and stopping it in this row here you can see the individual feathers which I think is really really clever and this water this is so simple but so effective it's just straight rows and they just overlap little bit like that and where they overlap is what creates the wave in the water and that's all there is to it it's not any more complicated than that but just by doing that in these specific places you get this beautiful effect of the bird going through the water which I think is is so wonderful so simple but so beautifully effective and this silk that they used is unspun silk so it's flat silk so it's lots of fibers put together and they would separate the fibers out sometimes into very very fine amounts um kind of less than a hair i think on some of them um and then you sort of a technique where you moisten your hands and you roll it through your hands and it gives it a little bit of a twist and you can stitch with it and then it will settle out and flatten out again so it's really hard material to work in um because it just frays and goes all over the place if you don't know what you're doing so it looks beautiful but i can assure you it is very technical to work with this thread so show you a few more images, all stitched, just incredible. And the realism of some of this as well. Um, this bird, does it say how high is? 47 and a half centimetres, so just under a metre high. So, you know, it's <laughs> huge, <laughs> absolutely enormous, which enables you to get the detail. But anybody who's done this technique knows how much work that is to do um, but absolutely stunning techniques and I love the muted colour palettes of these um, it didn't need bright to um, to have an effect just this muted colour and very clever use of the shading so it's another of my favourites so this is a wall hanging um, and the composition is really striking with these pieces beautiful beautiful sense of composition very different from western composition idea so the fact they could make something for this market is quite interesting and how they went may, might have changed it to suit western tastes a little bit more but still with this really obvious japanese style in it and these beautiful cranes amongst the wisteria really stunning and that one is huge this is two meters high and just under three meters wide absolutely enormous amount of stitching and thread which is silk thread it's not cheap either um would have gone into this and you can see the details in these feathers it's one color in these feathers and just by the clever use of where they start and finish the stitches and the edges and made this little void down the center for the the vein of the feather just gives you all these feather shapes it's so clever it really is you can see it in more detail here so just a very small part of it but look how everything overlaps with everything else the birds are in the grass um, and on the grass at the same time the grass is either side of them they overlap each other the, the wisteria comes down and overlaps the birds There's so much planning gone into this um, this piece to get all those layers working beautifully together and again this white birds on the black background is absolutely stunning Some really beautiful details in this now I need to show you this page first so you can get an idea of the whole thing so this is a screen so obviously a peacock so four panels wide um, again all stitched in these beautiful gold colours and the peacocks here, the colours in them are the real iridescence of the actual peacocks. You can really see that working there. 
And if I show you this close up, so have a good look at the whole thing and how many feathers there are in that. And then we'll go back a few pages. So here's the whole thing here. So 264 centimetres wide, two and a half metres, just over. And this blows my mind. <laughs> this bit. So this is a few of the feathers in that whole panel. And look at the layers in it. Just one feather on top of another. They could be actual ones that have just been laid down. The amount of stitching in it is, is phenomenal. And it's a sort of, I think they're a close peer at them. I think there are gold threads in there and coloured threads underneath. So the darker ones underneath coming through to the lighter ones on top. They've all been couched down top of each other. Um, and there's the stem. So this is a sort of a cross between a satin and a stem stitch underneath. And then these have been stitched over the top. We've got some shading in the middle here. These beautiful colours in the middle. They're not necessarily colours we would know a peacock as um, for the feathers because it's all gold. But just the layers of these feathers. Um, so that's the little detail of it. And we'll just go back and look at... So there's the detail. And there's the whole thing. So that's literally a small section of it. And it's huge, absolutely huge. And I can't even envisage doing that much stitching, um, but super stunning. Peacocks were a really popular subject, so they come in again and again. Here's another beautiful one. Quite a different style now, though. Lots more satin stitch in this one. Um, and this is really interesting, just straight stitches, but made to see all the individual feathers with the gold in the centre as well. So they stitched each one of those feathers on his body. Absolutely beautiful. And then here's some gold in the background. And even this has been stitched down in circles to give some texture to the background. So this beautiful silk colours on top of this gold. A little bit of kind of a, a satin stitch, padded satin stitch technique going on here with the silk to make these flowers look dimensional. So again, some different uses of stitches put together to make these pieces. And here's a little snapshot of this. So this is the whole thing here. It's just that bit. So you've got these flowers all over. He's sitting in this tree and another little one beneath him. Some more peacocks. Now, I want to show you some different animals. I said before how much I love my animals. Um, and you think, oh yeah, that's quite nice. It's a, it's a, an ocelot, actually, carrying a dead macaw. Interesting subject. Um, so that's the finished thing. It is 66 centimetres wide. Two rulers, quite large. And the detail of this one. You could look at this one for hours. So this is all this needle painting silk technique here. You can see how it follows the shape of fur and the spots in there, beautiful with the light colours in the middle. The detail is quite something that's really photographic with this dead bird in his mouth. But again, the colours are still muted, still a limited palette. I and mean, then using the technique to really say something special about this. And if that's not enough stitching, just stitch all the background as well. Um, mind blown really is and but I think he is beautiful really beautiful some more animals here's another absolutely stunning one appreciate I'm saying that quite a lot <laughs> I to describe these so a lion and lioness all in that same technique um, again quite large 70 centimeters wide so getting three quarters of a meter so these things were huge they didn't do little small things they went for it um so photographic and so much character in those um just with this one technique of stitching Um, I like the different subjects that they do sometimes when you're doing silk shading you kind of think oh I'm going to do a flower or an animal or something similar to that um but they didn't do that. They did landscapes a lot as well, which isn't necessarily an immediate subject you'd think of for this technique. And these waves are all done that way. So I was really interested to see these different subject matters that they do. There's another take on it, which is interesting. So this is a very limited colour palette. So this is just reds and oranges and browns on this dark background. And I hope you can see that clearly. 
can zoom in on that a little bit hopefully um, and just see a, it's a woman reading in the lamplight um, the simplicity of it is incredible and um, the skill is also incredible but just to have this limited thing and catch the light it's all about how the light hits the threads and she's just so serene and so beautiful and just in that limited palette never seen anything quite like that and I remember in the exhibition this one really stood out on the wall on its own Now these are funny little chappies and I'm going to read you a little bit about this one because these are skeletons. Um, so I just want to read you a bit about what it said. So this was entered into an exhibition um, but was rejected for display these two skeletons. So this one's playing some sort of stringed instrument. This one has got a fan with a nice red tassel hanging off it doing some kind of dance. Um, so it was rejected. Apparent reason for rejection was the subject was insulting and disrespectful. <laughs> Doesn't say to who and what was insulting and disrespectful specifically, but I thought that was really interesting that um, they didn't like this one. And um, it was inspired by a poem referred to a skeleton attending a flower viewing dressed like a court lady. <laughs> um, yeah, he would come up with that subject. But um, I love that they stitched it. So this is it close up. So I just think it's brilliant. So here's the skeleton with the fan. So I think this is the painting of it. He did a painting of it and the stitching was done from the painting. So this is the painting. So just dancing with the fan as, as you do. And then this is the stitched one with the stringed instrument here. And just so little of it in some areas, um, but wonderful. And apparently this artist um, got an actual skeleton. I'll read that bit as well, because that was interesting. Um, studying the anatomy of the human body and drew from an actual set of bones by an old woman from of an old woman which he borrowed from the Kyoto hospital <laughs> so you know he'd actually done that one from life as it were so really unusual subject I just think that was really funny and again who would think to silk shade a skull it's just not the subject you think would lend itself to that so moving on now this technique um, was was stunning, it was a standout in the exhibition and I've never seen it anywhere else and it's called the Oshii, if you're Japanese I hope I've said that right, I apologise if I haven't, um, technique and this technique involves, I'm going to read it, um, technique in which paper or silk wadding is covered with dyed and painted silk and other fabrics and pasted onto a background of silk or paper to create padded relief designs. Now I suppose we would know that as stump work but this is this is stump work taken to another level. So this is the whole panel I need to turn it over and show you the faces so you can see exactly what's involved in this. I'm going to jump to this one so I can show you. So here's one of the figures and this is three-dimensional so this is actually um, applied this is a piece of fabric painted, it's got all the contours of his face and his eyes and his lips painted and it's been um, padded underneath and it's been sewn down onto this background fabric. Um, so it's extremely realistic um, and three-dimensional so it's sort of a cross between embroidery and a painting and a piece of applique because um, his hands are done the same way. His clothing has all been applied and folded and stitched down, it's really been constructed and these characters were amazing because that's one of them and then were loads of them and they're all showing these different skills you can see him embroidering here sitting on the floor at his frame and lots of other things going he's painting he's doing some sort of carving some woodwork he's weaving two of them weaving here so just a really wonderful subject matter but such a unique um, way of making something um, so you've got to be able to paint and, and stitch as well so those were just stunning and they were all in this great big panel these four panels together that made this screen and all these figures every one of them is made in this way and it's really three-dimensional and has been applied so a really really stunning piece of embroidery like I've never seen anywhere really so well worth seeing that one and then here's the whole thing a little bit closer so you can see the effect of it and it just looks flat like a painting on here but when you get up close and you can see the dimensions of all these figures it was quite something else.
So that's a little look at threads of silk and gold, really beautiful silk shading and um, gold work and some form of stump work at the end there. I hope you've enjoyed having a little look through that with me. Um, as I said earlier, um, not available at the time of making this video, but if you have a little hunt around, you might find it. There's a few, few places that have got that um, for sale if you're interested. So that wraps up this little look um, at another book from my shelf, from my collection that I really love. I um, hope you've loved it too. Do check out all our other videos. You can see those here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell and then you won't miss any new videos from us.